What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released iOS 17.4 beta 1 to registered developers and soon to public beta testers. Now along with this release, Apple only released iPadOS 17.4 beta 1 and tvOS 17.4 beta 1, however I would expect watchOS 10.4 and macOS Sonoma 14.4 beta 1s to drop soon. Now as far as the size of this update, if you're coming from iOS 17.3 or any other final release, and you're going to a beta like 17.4 beta 1 that size is going to be very large as you can see it's 6.42 gigabytes on my 15 pro max which was coming from 17.3 so expect a relatively large size there if we go ahead and check out the build number for this update we can see it is 21e5184i so we do have an i at the end of the build number which is a relatively rare ending letter for a beta one so we will have quite a few betas to go here in 17.4 all right so now what's new here in ios 17.4 beta one and before we even go out of this about section i do have to show you the first change and it's all the way down here at the bottom and it shows our identifiable region so mine says un known right now so I'm not really sure what's going on with that and you can see the text down here is still placeholder text so that is clearly a bug in beta 1 I'm sure that will be solved eventually and probably in the next beta but this has something to do with side loading which we'll talk about here in a moment okay so now let's talk about side loading and everything going on with EU devices so first off iOS 17.4 beta 1 does introduce side loading and third-party app stores on EU based iPhones. Now we still do not know exactly how Apple deems these to be EU iPhones, if it's region locked based on your Apple ID or you know what. So we don't know for sure right now because not everything is working on the back end since this is a beta for now. But we do know that 17.4 beta 1 does you know lay the groundwork, lays the framework for side loading and third-party app stores on iOS. But that's not all. We also have the ability for an EU. Remember, this is only in the EU because they are you know, forcing this on Apple. So you'll, we'll also see third-party game streaming services. So things like Xbox Cloud Gaming and NVIDIA GeForce Now. So you'll see applications like that working now on iOS in the EU. Also third-party default browsers and engines, along with alternative in-app payment methods, including those via NFC. So now NFC payments will be available directly in applications without the need for Apple Pay or the wallet application. Now, in terms of which applications can be sideloaded onto your iPhone, it's not going to work exactly like Mac OS. Like you won't just be able to download anything you see in Safari. Apple is still going to have to review every app via automated notarization checks. So these checks are going to scan for viruses and malware, and there will be a human review as well. So a human is going to have to review the application as well to make sure that the app adheres to the terms of service and the Apple App Store policies. And Apple says that when you install a third-party app store on your device, you will still need to give permission to that application before it can install applications on your device. So there is a management system inside of settings. I would imagine it's very similar to what we saw, you know, with jailbreaking and, you know, loading things up and signing things, if you remember that back then. So there will be something in here where you have to sign it, most likely in settings general, and then most likely down here under VPN and device management. Usually in here is where you will have to sign you know applications and then also in that same section and settings here you will also be able to revoke permissions for those third-party app stores and also set a default app store so if you don't want the default app store being the apple app store you can set that in settings as well now as for developers this is also where it gets a little bit tricky because there are no commissions for third-party applications but in order for apple to you know not charge a commission there is going to be a core technology fee that is half a euro Per install so like 50 cents or 50 euros or you know 0.50 euros per install per account so the first million installs so the first 1 million installs of that application are going to be free for developers but after that 1 million install mark the fee is going to kick in so there's also a 3% payment processing charge for applications that use Apple's in-app purchase system now what's also cool is that iOS 17.4 will notify you if a third-party application has malware so this was found in the code and this could be very useful especially if some apps 
kind of you know slip through the cracks and Apple doesn't pick up on it right away. Now also in 17.4 beta 1, we have seven new emojis. So you can see we have this head going forward, the head going sideways. We have the phoenix, we have the lime, we have the brown mushroom, we have the chain breaking, and then we have all these different family ones right here. So all of these are brand new in 17.4 beta one. We also have some changes in the Safari application. So if you take a look at the address bar down at the bottom there, it is wider on 17.4 beta one. So it goes closer to the edge of the screen than what we saw on 17.3 and previous versions of iOS 17. Also, if you tap on the two A's inside of the address bar, we have a brand new option up top that says play all animations. So we do also have this one right here that says reduce privacy protections before we only had the turn off content blockers, but reduce privacy protections appears to be new as well. Now, in terms of the play all animations, if I tap on that, you can see that it's just going to play any animations that are on the web page. So I'm assuming that is going to be GIF images, you know, or anything with an animation, anything that moves, you have a button now to play or pause all animations. So I could also pause all animations after they start playing. Now there's also a significant change to the stolen device protection feature, which was just introduced in iOS 17.3. So if you go into your settings and go to face ID and passcode, and then go down to stolen device protection, we can see that before on iOS 17.3, stolen device protection was just simply a button that you press to turn it on or off. And that was it. But now in 17.4, we can see that there is a whole section for stolen device protection. So now if you go into that section, we now have a kill switch up top that also tells you what it does right underneath, which by the way, that is also different from what it said on 17.3. So you can see it's a little bit more condensed now with a learn more button. And before it said, learn more about stolen device protection. So it was a little bit lengthier, but now it's shorter and it's just a learn more button. Now that's not important. What's important right here is what's beneath that. And that is require security delay. So you can now require that one hour security delay either away from familiar locations, which is the default, or you can set it to always require a security delay, even if you're at a familiar location. Now there's also a couple of other changes inside of the settings. So if we go to settings and then privacy and security, you'll notice there's a brand new option here and it currently does not have a glyph icon. So I'm sure that will be added probably in the next beta, but we have contactless and NFC. So that has now been added to this section and it says applications that have requested the ability to use contactless and NFC will appear here. So this is here because of what I was talking about earlier with side loading and where you can use alternative in-app payment methods via contactless and NFC. And then if we head down to our messages settings and then we go down to the bottom, you'll notice that we have a new option down here, a new section for messages for business. So this is empty right now, but I'm assuming that once you have messages that you've, you know, messaged with businesses like Apple or anybody else with the check mark, those might show up here, but that is a new section in 17.4. And speaking of messages, there's also now a setting where Siri can read messages in different languages. And then there's also been a couple of changes found in the code as well. So 17.4 adds support for firmware updates for ear pods with USB-C connector and also USB-C to 3.5 millimeter headphone jack adapter. So you're going to get firmware updates for your dongles now. So look forward to that. But more importantly, in the code of 17.4, we can see that with CarPlay 2.0, when you turn your car off, there's going to be a goodbye screen, kind of like you see on an iPhone, a Mac or an iPad when you get it brand new with that animation there. So that is pretty awesome. Now, as far as the release notes go for 17.4, we do have a few known issues here. So you can see some related to general. So apps require certain managed entitlements might not install or show an error. We have some HomeKit issues where viewing HomeKit camera live video might not work when away from home. There's also a known issue with maps, also with messages. So stickers might appear blank. And then also some known issues under podcasts and the setup assistant, along with a few others that are added in here in the release notes. I will leave this linked in the description below if you want to read through it. Now, as far as the performance and the battery life goes, I can tell you right now that the performance feels great so far. Everything feels very fluid and very nice here on 17.4 beta one, but I am going to run a quick Geekbench 6 test to see how it compares to the final version of 17.3. 
three. All right, so we scored a 29-31 on the single core and a 72-35 on the multi-core. So if we compare that to 17.3, we can see slightly lower on the single core and also slightly lower on the multi-core. So that's kind of expected for a first beta, but of course I will continue to run these tests throughout the beta and see how it compares to 17.3. However, like I said, my first impressions are that it feels pretty much the same as 17.3, but of course it's too early to tell, so we'll give you guys an update in my Apple Weekly episode on Saturday and also in future weeks as well. And then the same thing goes with the battery life. It's really way too early to tell if battery life is better or worse than 17.3. You guys will have to tell me what I started this video with, but I'm at 51% now so i'm not sure how battery life is because i haven't been paying attention during you know this video but again i will continue to monitor that battery life and report to you guys if it is better or worse and just my overall experience in the coming weeks all right so now let's talk about what to expect next from apple so next up is going to be ios 17.4 beta 2. now i think we are going to go on a two-week cycle at first so i do not think we're going to get beta 2 until the week of february 5th so we could see Beta 2 of 17.4 on February 6th or 7th. Those would be the two days that I think are more likely. Of course, Tuesday is usually when Apple releases those beta updates. So I would expect it sometime early on the week of February 5th. And then after that, we should be on a one week cycle. So after that, we should see beta 3 beta 4 rc and then we probably will see 17.4 the final release on the week of march 4th or at the very latest the week of march 11th so we'll have to wait and see what happens apple does always throw curveballs our way so anything could happen but that is just my personal prediction but anyways guys there you have it that is ios 17.4 beta 1 a major change especially for those in the eu i mean side loading this is one of the biggest changes to ios ever i mean definitely one of the biggest changes of all time for the iphone something we never thought would come to the iphone is happening and it starts with 17.4 beta 1 but of course if you're in the us it's going to be a nice update at least for beta 1 a few changes but nothing significant like for those in the eu but of course we will continue to follow up we will continue to bring you more updates on 17.4 as the betas go on and as we get closer to that final release we could have a lot more features in 17.4 since these 0.4 updates are typically rather large updates with a lot of changes so we'll have to wait and see but if you guys enjoyed this episode this video i would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up also be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future ios 17.4 videos and also 17.3.1 if we do see that at some point in the near future of course before march but anyways guys thanks again for watching and i'll see you soon